Hey guys, welcome back to Brozuka Arms. A lot of people think that having an ambidextrous lower is only advantageous to left-handed shooters. In fact, many people just call them left-handed lowers. However, there is value in having an ambi lower as a right-handed shooter. I'm gonna show you where that value comes from while also pointing out why so many lowers that are marketed as ambi aren't truly ambidextrous. Let's start off with a list of lowers that are not ambidextrous. And hear me out on this because I know there are some of you out there that don't want to accept that your lower isn't fully ambidextrous. And yes, I know that bad levers exist. That's not what we're here to talk about. We are here to talk about truly ambidextrous factory lowers. There, this is one I believe I'm gonna get a lot of flack on because you spent so much money on it and I can't believe it's not ambi. The Knight's Armament SR15 IWS. The SR15 uh, IWS is a really nice lower. A lot of people are in love with Knight's Armament as a company. They've been around for a really long time and they put out a lot of solid products. You don't really hear, hear many people talking bad about Knight's Armament. Um, they're kind of the pinnacle as far as military weapons, uh, at least small arms. But there's one flaw with this ambidextrous lower and it's pretty much the flaw with any ambidextrous lower and that is it does not have a right side bolt catch. There is a difference between a bolt catch and a bolt release. The left side of most receivers has a lever that actuates the bolt catch and the bolt release. Well, most of these ambi lowers only have a bolt release on the right side, so it is not fully ambidextrous. Next in line is the Mega Arms Ambi Lower. As far as I know, Mega Arms was the first manufacturer to use that right side bolt release. Most companies since then have modeled their components after that. But we can see that this falls short of most of the modern Ambi marketed lowers because it doesn't even have a left side mag release. So this definitely is not an ambidextrous lower. After that, we have Zev. And yes, I know Zev bought out Mega Arms. But Zev took some of that technology and really launched their AR platforms. So they started making some great looking ultralight receivers that actually did include a left side mag release. But of course, there was still no right side bolt catch. Stepping up to the plate is the Rainier Arms Ultramatch Mod 3 receivers. These are pretty much your standard run-of-the-mill ambi receivers in overall looks and functionality. Not saying Rainier Arms is a low-quality company, but there's nothing original um, about this lower other than a minor amount of texturing in the machining just above the trigger guard. Next, we have the CMT Cross Machine Tool ambi lower, which is practically identical to the Rainier Arms receivers. Nothing really special about these. I had a CMT rifle for a little while, and I didn't have any real problems with it. It ran fine. I actually really did like their handguards though. Okay, the six hour M400 lower. Now, most of their carbines have a left side mag release, but only their nine millimeter carbines have a right side bolt release. So that leaves their rifle caliber carbines lacking some essential features. Although I will say that SIG does not market their M400 rifles as ambidextrous. Okay. The Aero Precision Ambi Lower with the Odin Works lever. This is an odd one because unlike the others, um, it has a right side bolt catch and release, but doesn't have a left side magazine release. So this is not a fully ambidextrous lower. Now, what do all of these lowers that I mentioned have in common? Whether it's a left side mag release or right side bolt catch, they are all missing at least one component that keeps them from being truly ambidextrous. Now, I understand that there are several marketed ambi lowers that I did not mention. I just decided to go with the most popular ones, but in general, they're all the same, um, you know, for, <laughs> for the most part. Now, these are truly ambidextrous factory lowers. I'll kick this list off with LWRC's M6 lower. I'm a massive fan of LWRC and have owned about 10 of their rifles over the years. One reason I was drawn to their lowers is that they look extremely traditional and mil-spec. They aren't too flashy and look like they belong with a military battle rifle. Their parts look mil-spec and tie it all together to create this badass, no-fuss ambi lower. I've never once had an issue or malfunction with the M6 lowers and it is a solid choice whether you run factory LWRC rifle or you just want an awesome rugged ambi lower for your battle rifle build.
Next, we have the LMT Mars Lower. Now let's just face it, this is a not as good looking knockoff of the M6 Lower. They basically copied LWRC's right side components, and that's fine, I'm not taking anything away from LMT. They are a solid company and make some damn good firearms. Chances are if you have an LMT rifle, you probably love it. And if you're running an LMT upper, I totally understand wanting to keep it all uniform, you know, LMT across the board. I won't say this is a bad lower because LMT doesn't put out subpar products, but I will say that it doesn't look as well put together as the M6 lower. You can clearly see that they machine out a ravine and then fill it in with a compound to protect the components, whereas the M6 is 100% machined with that pathway integral to the receiver. So I'm sure the Mars lower will get the job done. I just prefer the M6 because of the crafts craftsmanship, attention to detail, and overall professional look. Now this next one is near and dear to my heart, as most of you already know, the Radian ADAC lower. This is an overbuilt and rugged receiver that is extremely elegant, masterfully machined, and mean as hell. With just a once over of this, you can easily tell that the machinist who designed this meant business. From the PMAG style machining outside of the magwell, all the way to the fully enclosed components that drive the ambi controls. This lower is feature rich and will leave you with little to complain about. It also has a flared magwell which makes mag changes an absolute breeze. It may be on the heavier side of lowers, but trust me when I say it's worth every dollar. Now let's go ahead and watch those right side controls in action. Next up is the American Defense UIC Ambi Lower. It's taken me a very long time to acquire this because every time I've been in a place to buy one, they've always been sold out everywhere. I've only had it for a few months, but I've quickly come to count this lower among the finer tools in my arsenal. It's a great looking lower, it's a little lighter than the ADAC, and goes well with any upper receiver system. You could throw it into any build and it would look good. Now let's see how these right side controls handle. the POF Gen 4 lower. Now I haven't had one of these in a while because I decided to move over to Radian and let go of some of my inventory to focus more on purpose-driven platforms. But it's a great lower, it's very feature-rich, and POF makes great products. This one is no exception. At the end of the day, I just wasn't in love with this receiver though. I didn't really like how different each side of the receiver was. Ultimately, I wanted my controls to be a little more organized and a little bit closer together. Last up, we have the Falcor Defense Ambi Lower. Even though this isn't one I personally liked, I can't disregard it from the list. The mag release is highly exposed on both sides and is only protected by a ridge on the forward end of the receiver. The lower portion of the bolt catch and release lever sits almost flush with the receiver. So to actuate the right side bolt catch, you have to use the tip of your index finger to push it into the recess. This requires fine motor skills to achieve the desired result, so it's probably not a wise option to be used in a battle rifle build. Falcor makes some futuristic guns and has some cool technology that they put out, but when I'm thinking of the absolute best ambidextrous lower, factors that need to be taken into account are ruggedness, reliability, ease of use, and location of controls. Well, if you can accidentally pop your mags out by brushing your rifle up against something, then it's no longer reliable. The location of the bolt catch makes it not easy to use, so there are three of the four categories that it just failed at. I don't take this serious as an ambi lower, 
And yes, I have owned a few of their rifles in many of their parts over the years, but their rifles are for collectors and people that never have to worry about shooting under stress. Okay, so we have our top contenders for the best factory ambidextrous lower. And the top three are going to be the LWRC M6 lower, the Radian ADAC lower, and also the American Defense UIC lower. So let's go ahead and start off with the LWRC M6 lower. This is one of my personal favorites. Um, I've just run so many of them, never really had problems with them. And as you can see in the video, it, it might seem like I'm really having to reach up to release that bolt, that paddle right there. Um, but I don't find that to be too much of a problem because since it's sticking out that way, it's very easy to feel where it is. You're not having to focus on it too much. You just kind of move up. Okay, you got that pressure. Let's push it in. And um, seems to work pretty great for me. Uh, never really had any problems. So if you're wanting a very traditional style lower, um, you're having or you're building a very mil spec um, rifle, something like a Mark 18, and maybe you don't want to be exactly clone correct because you want to have something really cool on there. Uh, this would definitely be the lower for you. Now, next up, we'll talk about the Radian. Now it's gonna fall over, we'll just let it. Okay, now we have the Radian ADAC lower. This is um, what I've been running for the past two years now. My other one's right here. This is on my SBR. And uh, it took me a while to figure out what lower on the market I would be willing to SBR and I decided that it was this. It's just so overbuilt. I mean, this thing's, it's pretty massive. And it's not a pound heavier than other lowers, um, but it has some additional heft to it and the machining on it is just superb. Um, I find that I really like that very large release paddle for that bolt release. And they call it ADEC because it is the ambidextrous dual action catch. This is the dual action catch. So you press this and it lifts up that lever. Let's try it again, lifts up that lever. So this is what you use to catch that bolt when you wanna hold it back. Now, something that I think is pretty cool on this side is in that same area, you can you know just release your magazine or you could push your finger a little bit further and do both at the same time. So again, lifting that lever with the left side. So essentially you're doing the exact same thing, exact same finger placement on both sides to get the same result. But if you're a right-handed shooter, then you just have to lift it up real quick, slam that down and you're good to go. Um, so this has been a fantastic lower. The flared magazine well is something that I've just been in love with the entire time I've had it. Something you'll see on most of the ambidextrous lowers on the market is this texturing up here in front of the magwell, a little extra grip and uh, a little more tactile. But again, there is that Magpul style machining in there. So I'll grab the mag and you can see that it matches that pattern from the PMAG. When I saw that, it blew my mind. I never really noticed it and um, once I did, I'm like, man, these guys kind of thought of everything. So even on the back, you have those little areas right there. It goes up right there as well. So uh, these, these guys really thought of everything when they built this. And one thing I want to point out is the shape of the machining of the receiver right here is mirrored on this side. It is exactly the same. So they like to um, you know, have some continuity in both sides of their receiver, which is amazing, and I really appreciate it. So there's that one. And now let's go ahead and talk about the American Defense UIC. So it's a great looking little lower. It almost looks like the ADAC lower, a little bit, in that it's kind of overbuilt right here and here, but their design in here had to be a little bit different. I mean, they can't completely knock off um, Radian, but so here's that lever and let's make sure it's focusing. So there's that lever. 
there is a problem with this lower. As much as I love it, there's a problem. You'll notice when I go to bring my finger up and lift that up, what's it catching on? That's right, it's catching on the safety. So that's kind of a problem when you're trying to engage it as a bolt catch. However, once it's up, you just slap it down and it releases that bolt catch probably the fastest of any ambidextrous lower I've used. So that means it's even faster than the LWRC, means it's even faster than the Radiant ADAC lower. So this has the fastest release of a bolt of any of them. So I think that's um, something to take into consideration that you may have to, you may struggle a little bit getting that up. That sounded wrong, but getting that up and once it's up there, you can just slap it down. So I think this is a great lower. Um, there are a couple drawbacks and you may have noticed it when I brought this up, but there's a little hole right there. And this lever has a little bit of play in it. It's probably gonna be really hard for you guys to see, but there's some play in there. And on the inside of the receiver right in here, you can see where it hooks onto this little screw. So if something were to break, it would definitely be this lever. So I'm kind of scared about how much abuse that can actually take. Um, but to give them credit for some good machining, I didn't notice until I actually tried putting on some um, anti-rotation pins right here that this actually has a recess for it. There's a recess right there for it. And I actually ran the anti-rotation pin just on the back or the anti-walk pin just on the back. And then in the front, only a screw on this side. But one day I was um, messing with the trigger, took it out, and I realized that it actually has a recess so you can use your anti-walk pins as long as they are just the single studded anti-walk pins and not the actual anti-walk bars. So that's something pretty cool. Um, they had some foresight to think of that. Now, with all these lowers, we have, we have already pointed out that they work for right-handed shooters and that there is value in having an ambidextrous lower as a right-handed shooter. But for all of my left-handed viewers watching this video, you're probably wondering, which is the best lower for you? because you're gonna be using the controls on this side. Well, sadly, I can tell you it's not this lower. This lower has some serious problems when it comes to releasing a mag from this side. So I'm pushing in, I'm pushing in. That's the mag release right there, I'm pushing in. You have to just kind of keep pushing and pushing and pushing. So I'll try it again. I'm pushing down that button. You have to really drive your finger into it to drop that mag. So. With this lower, you're not gonna be conducting speed reloads, I promise you that. Um, and that's really unfortunate because it's an awesome lower and I think it would have been an excellent choice for left-handed shooters. Um, so yeah, that's a big problem. This is pretty much unusable for left-handed shooters. You're not gonna be able to get your mags out. That's just plain and simple. So again, you can, uh, so <laughs> it's really rough. Um, okay, since I did it with the ADM UIC, I figured I would do it with all of the lowers demonstrating the left side mag release. So here is the LWRC. So pretty easy with this, basically shooting it out. I'm not having to drive the tip of my index finger in there to get it to fall out. Actually, it seems like when I do that, it actually messes it up. <laughs> there we go. So just keeping it on top of that paddle, fully indexed, just a light push. Not too light, but you know, not too heavy either. Just pops right out. So let's try it out with the radium.
This one's actually a little bit easier than the LWRC. So that's gonna work out just fine. And you have an oversized uh, bolt release pedal up here. So it would be very easy for you as a left-handed shooter to go ahead and drop that bolt. Just boom. One more time for good measure. Another drawback to this lower, and it doesn't really mess with functionality at all, but uh, just in terms of machining, if we look at this paddle here, all the little ridges have some inconsistencies in them, some little anomalies where they're little pieces of steel got stuck in there when these things were molded. And here at the bottom, some of those ridges are just smushed. Um, so it looks like they didn't really put a lot of time and effort into making these paddles. So it's kind of a bummer because it's not, it's not a cheap lower. I mean, they're around 280, 290 bucks. So that's kind of a bummer. However, for a right-handed shooter, I think this is a pretty cool option for you. Um, it's fun. It's, it's going to run you about 80 to $90 less than a Radian lower. And um, typically you can only find LWRC lowers sold as a complete lower. It's not just the stripped receiver. And those are going for $500 to $600. So those aren't cheap either. But because of some of the problems that this has for left-handed shooters and because this gets in the way of getting that lever up easily, this is no longer in the running for the best ambidextrous factory lower. So as awesome as this is, and as much as I've grown to love it, it does have some downfalls. So this is out. So now we're back to the Radian and the LWRC lowers. And which one I would pick as the best ambidextrous factory lower? My choice is the Radian. It's just overbuilt, it's sexy, and the controls are completely enclosed here. There's nothing sticking out, no, no extra levers. I don't have to reach as far to actuate the bolt release as I do on the LWRC. And ultimately, I like having my um, 45 degree lever and it actually has the engravings for that 45 degree lever, I think that's pretty cool. So if you have a Voltor upper or some kind of blocky, faceted looking upper receiver, the ADAC lower is gonna look pretty good with it. So the, the Voltor, I think the UIR, something like that. I can't remember the actual name of that upper right now, but it goes awesome with this lower. Now, if I were to put this lower with just a standard mil-spec upper receiver, it wouldn't look that great. And this LWRC would. It would look great on most upper receivers and rifles in general. However, trying to put a Radian upper receiver on this lower would just not look right. So at the end of the day, even though I think this takes the win overall, you're gonna to have to choose which one is best for you and which way you're taking your build. Are you wanting more of a billet looking rifle or are you wanting something that's forged and very military looking? Because if that's what you want, then this is your lower. But these are the two best ambidextrous lowers, fully ambidextrous, truly ambidextrous factory lowers on the market right now. No other ones. These are the best, they take the cake, and ultimately, whichever one you choose, you are not going to be disappointed. However, I would recommend getting rid of this uh, LWRC Enhanced Nickel Boron Trigger. It kind of sucks. It's, it's barely better than just a standard mil-spec trigger. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Best lower on the market, as I believe they have the best rifle on the market. I'm not taking anything away from LMT or Knight's Armament or LWRC for that matter. But I just think even with the price tag on it, 
you're gonna love walking into your armory and looking at this thing every single time. You're not gonna get tired of it, I promise you. There's nothing more feature rich out there. This is literally the pinnacle of features and just the best machining and the most overbuilt, rugged receiver and handguard system out there. There's no play in the receivers. There's no play between the handguard and the upper receiver. It's just top notch, guys. So thank you for watching. I got some other videos coming out, so be sure to stick around. All right, guys, take care.